This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. When a life is in our hands, we don't get any second chances. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of courage under pressure and the men, women, and children who rise to the occasion on Rescue 911. We begin on January 27, 1992, in Chesterland, Ohio, after two champion horses had just run their last races of the season. That's your step. I've had her longer than any other horse we've ever had. And I don't know why. She just always was that special one. She ended up making almost $100,000 for me this year that just ended. The filly setting limits and a coat were being taken to a farm for the winter by trainer Pat Mahoney. Some race horses are uh, very congenial. You can load them on with no problem. Some you have to actually uh, uh, give a little uh, tranquilizer to. In this particular case, initially loading them wasn't real easy. Susan Flores and her husband were traveling behind the trailer. It was obvious to us that the horse trailer was going slower than everyone else because everyone was shooting past it. There are times, I suppose, when they shift their weight, the trailer will sway a little bit. And that is probably not the safest way of transporting a horse. The trailer started going left to right, and at this point we are now getting excited. I couldn't believe it. It was just like a slow motion movie. I was scared to death. I see the trailer, of course, turned over, and one horse really struggling to get out. And at that time, I didn't know really what to do. I didn't want to let the horse loose for fear it would uh, go in the traffic. I, uh, I didn't want to keep it in there because I knew they were hurting each other. Setting limits was pinned underneath the coat. That horse was trying to sidestep the other horse, not trying to hurt it, but it was so scared that it was just boom, 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 boom on top of this other horse. And every time it would hit the horse's face, that horse would scream. The sights and the sounds were just unreal. When we continue. This filly was just flat out panicked and many well-meaning people have been killed by horses that are in a panic situation. When a trailer transporting two racehorses flipped over on a busy freeway, injuring one animal seriously, several concerned motorists use their car phones to call for help. Much of the footage was taped as the events unfolded. Rescue units from the Independence Fire and Police Departments were sent to the scene. All right, watch out, come on, 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 come on. And all of a sudden, the horse just took off right down the median. And what's going through your mind then is, what's gonna happen? Is this horse gonna go in the street, hit a car, kill somebody? Uh, that can't happen. 
A mile down the interstate, they finally caught the coat. Six minutes after the call, rescue units arrived, including firefighter paramedic Frank Krasuski. Setting limits was still trapped in the wreck trailer. It was a cold night. Uh, the only way to get the horse out would be to cut it out. We had the equipment all at the scene to rip that trailer right in half. But what to do with the horse afterwards, we didn't know what to do. Well, we decided against that decision, and we decided to wait for the veterinarian to come. It was a nasty scene. Uh, the horse was struggling to get out and obviously hurting itself even more. With racehorses, the main thing, of course, you're concerned about are the legs. And you can see there's quite a bit of blood on the legs, plus all the kicking of the trailer there. Uh, they could have done an extensive damage because they can just kick a stall, kick a board, just kick something, and end a career. Veterinarians Dan Wilson and David Miller, who specialize in treating horses, arrived within 30 minutes. When they're in danger, their first instinct is to run. And when they can't, they panic. This filly was locked in there and she wasn't going anywhere. We knew we had to get her out of the trailer so we can assess her health and see if it was worth trying to save her or if she was a dead horse. When they started sawing, hot sparks would fly and every once in a while hit the horse. This filly was just flat out panicked and approaching exhaustion, but uh, many well-meaning people have been killed by horses that are in a panic situation. I crawled inside the trailer and tried to get her foot out of this hay rack, and then she collapsed. She just had all she could take. I didn't know where all the blood was coming from, but he had blood all over his neck and blood all over the trailer. We couldn't see her front legs very well, and we couldn't see her down right leg at all. So if it was smashed, then obviously her chances were very grave. We gave her no tranquilizers because we didn't want to depress her any more than she already was. And basically we instituted some potent short-acting steroids to try and reverse the shock situation. Yeah, to pull her out the head was bleeding severely. I thought, you know, there's, just hope the horse pulls through, let alone ever race again. The horse came out, and immediately it didn't want to get up. So it laid on its side in the, on the cold snow and on the muddy ground. It lost a lot of blood, and with a loss of blood like that, uh, the horse was in danger of dying. She was in shock, and so we made the decision to instead of trying to get her off the highway to start treating her right there. Dr. Miller immediately began surgery to try to repair a severed artery above the filly's left eye. His assistant started an IV in the horse's neck and he said just hold pressure and push it in as fast as you can. We're not used to pushing so much fluid into a human. Uh, they just don't teach us veterinary medicine in paramedic school. It was amazing to see that the veterinarian could work under such conditions. It wasn't like an emergency room hospital. He was on his knees, the horse was down on the ground, it was cold, and it was a very uncomfortable position. The man was really good. I was trying to hold her on the ground. Um, I eased off a little bit. She just kind of pitched me around like a peanut there. I just didn't expect the horse to, to get up so quickly. You got a cooler for her, a blanket or something? That was a great sign for her. She uh, was strong and ready to go. And once she stood up, she never looked back. You got one for me? Yeah, I got one for you. 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 Yeah
I'm starting to think, you know, maybe it's not as tragic as it all seemed that it would be, and maybe there could be a happy ending. To me, the most amazing thing is these animals will walk back in another trailer. I don't know if they can reason, but they surely can trust. They're kind. I love them. The paramedics and firemen that were there were absolutely great. They're the ones who really deserve the credit for saving these Philly and the Colt. Soon after the accident, setting limits began rehabilitation. But her owner, Shirley Gurton, knew her future was still uncertain. I didn't know how she'd ever be able to recover from this fully enough to be a racehorse, and that's basically what she was put out here to do. And I guess I'm not known as a quitter, and she certainly isn't. Despite all odds, on September 26, 1992, eight months after the accident, setting limits returned to the track. And uh, they're off. For between horses, Foolish Ginger on the outside Archdale Road with good speed from the opening bell. There goes Zoop up a doo. She overcome everything we asked her to overcome. She'd go out there and run her heart out. The final for long for setting limits. She's in front by four. We're coming down to the line, but it won't get to setting limits. Setting limits bounds on by three and a half lengths. Halibut. She went out in style. She went out winning, and she left just as happy as the day that she came in. So she had a big smile on her face. It's amazing that she came back, even just to win one more race. You sure took a spill, silly girl. She'll be going to be a broodmare. She's going to go have babies now. So well-deserved babies, I hope, that they shall be the runners and carry the heart and stamina that she carried. She's a good girl.